The Ontario Prospectors Association says exploration finds mines. Here we are talking mining. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Ontario Prospectors Exploration Showcase in the beautiful, my beautiful riding of Thunder Bay out of Kogan. So I want to welcome everybody here that's in from out of town and say what a great event it's been. Uh, we had the opportunity to walk around visit some of the vendors and showcases here and it's, uh, it's really exciting to, uh, to have the opportunity to sp speak with uh, so many of you. I'm really happy to join you for this year's conference and I look forward to working with OPA in my new role as Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Mines. And I think it's appropriate that my first official duties as, uh, as the new PA to Minister Peary is in my riding. You know, it's a riding that has such great uh, potential and so much so much opportunity. And that's why our government, we are diligent working, diligently working to create the conditions for an unprecedented era of prosperity in the northern communities like Thunder Bay and all across the province. Our government understands that mining industry is critical to building a strong provincial and national economy. And here to tell you all about the work we're doing is, some, is someone who likely needs no introduction. Born and raised in the mining town of Timmins and a lifelong miner, Minister Peary understands the challenges, benefits and opportunities facing the industry and we are lucky to have him in this role. He brings 35 years of experience as a mining executive, including being the President and CEO of Placer Dome Canada, President and CEO of Breakwater Resources and President and CEO of Sand Gold Inc. As Mayor of Timmins, he oversaw the largest mining boom in 50 years, something he hopes to replicate all across the north. He has served on the Mining Association of Canada, the Ontario Mining Association, and as al was also the co-chairman of the Ontario Mineral Industry Cluster Initiative. So without further delay, it's my honour to introduce to you my colleague, the Honourable, Honourable George Peary, Minister of Mines. Well, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure for me to be here. I've got prepared marks that I'll go through, uh, especially important for the, uh, the media that will that, uh, be available to them. I'll give you a little bit more background about me. Uh, my father was born in 1920 in a house behind the mill at the Dome. So when I say that I was uh, raised in the shadow of a head frame, I really was. I was raised in Dome and Dome X, and those towns no longer exist. They were consumed by the open pit at the, at the uh, Dome mine. Uh, in my career, um, I worked all around the world. The only continent that I never worked on uh, was Antarctica. I'll tell you, uh, throughout my career, whether I was running a, uh, an individual mine or a corporation, if I was having a bad day, the people I wanted to talk to at the end of the day were geologists or prospectors because they always were positive. They were always thinking. There was, there was always something on their horizon. There was something that they were working and striving for. Great people to meet with, great people to be associated with. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's important that everybody knows uh, who you should be talking to at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, you should be talking to very positive people. And that's what made, that's made this uh, conference so successful. It's full of people with new ideas. Look at the projects you're working on, all full of ideas. Some of them are old projects that have been rethought. Um, and there's nothing more ex exciting <coughs> to me than to be looking at an older, an older project and someone has got a new idea and you find something totally new. It's a large story of, of uh, Northern Ontario, Northwestern Ontario. I have a lot of experience, of course, in northwestern Ontario and Thunder Bay. Uh, as I said, I was uh, uh, part of the Dome uh, Company for a lot of years, and Campbell was close to our heart. But in the uh, early 90s, of course, we were part of the Muscle White project. That was another project that was, that was run by the, by the Dome. Um, it's where I was first exposed to the importance of sustainable mining. Sustainable mining, uh, which of course meant uh, the full partnerships with the Indigenous people. We had signed five uh, uh, agreements with five nations in the, in the area. Uh, it's where I got my first um, exposure to um, the Indian Act, um, which is a, you know, it's a race, racist piece, a piece of, doc, of, of uh, legislation. Um, I remember, and it was in the early 90s, through this exercise, finding out that the Indigenous people didn't have a vote 
until 1960 on reserves. I don't know how many people knew that. I certainly didn't. Uh, and it was just a, um, a striking revelation, uh, uh, realization for me. Um, we were uh, always fully, fully committed to the, the process of reconciliation with our, the indigenous peoples. Um, and it's really critical to ensure that all of our resources are, are developed and our potential is fully uh, capitalized on. I want to bring you up to date, up to date on a couple things at PDAC. Um, PDAC was an exceptionally good conversation. I had good briefings with uh, ministers of uh, uh, NRCAN, Jonathan Wilkinson, uh, who told me that, that um, you know, they had to take 10 years off permitting the mines and that we had to build our mines five times faster, all on the back of the threat from the Chinese. Um, the, uh, this is a real threat. That's, uh, we all realize that the gold is approaching 3,000 bucks an ounce right now. Uh, we know that there's um, activities with uh, the Russian and the Chinese in the Northern Islands and in northern, in northern waters. It's something that affects all of us and our sovereignty, and it's, it's a real threat to uh, Canada. So don't lose sight of that. Um, the other thing that I want to comment uh, before I get into my prepared marks is uh, to be proud of your city. Thunder Bay is an absolutely wonderful place. It truly is. It's a jewel across the globe. When I look at your Economic Development Corporation, they're wearing their blue jackets. That's because they're proud of Thunder Bay. And the way that they, we look at uh, their Economic Development Corporation is it's regional. It's regional. And when we look at these maps around here, you'll see the focus uh, of all these mining projects. And I will, we don't talk about it. I'm in the Minister of Mines, but obviously the agricultural potential and forestry potential. They're the three, uh, they're the three uh, uh, founding uh, sources of our economic prosperity with uh, also in full co cooperation with indigenous people. Um, but the home to all of this is Thunder Bay. Uh, I'm, I'm really quite convinced that Thunder Bay will be 200,000 people because it's got what the world needs. Now, I'll, I'll go into my prepared, prepared marks. Um, so be patient with me as I read these. I'm far better better speaking <laughs> passionately about what I believe in, like communities uh, like Thunder Bay. But uh, these, these, are very, these remarks are very important. Uzu, hello. I want to acknowledge that we're meeting in the Robinson Superior Treaty Area on lands traditionally used by several indigenous nations and pay special recognition to the community of Fort William First Nation, as well as other, Rob as other Robinson Superior Treaty communities and the Métis people of this area. I want to thank my new parliamentary assistant, Kevin Holland, for his introductions and for being a great advocate for Thunder Bay at Queen's Park. Uh, I want to tell you, um, Kevin wears his passion for Thunder Bay on his sleeve. Hmm? Kevin is always very well prepared to advocate on all of the issues in his riding and in, in, in the North, broadly speaking, and certainly in Northwest Ontario. Uh, you couldn't have a better champion for this region than Kevin Holland. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to begin by commending Gary Clark and the Ontario Prospectors Association for organizing this year's event. This is shaping up to be a productive few days, and Gary has been here and he's been involved in this for. I don't know how many years I've lost track of him. I can't see him, but he just made the presentation. Uh, there's another guy that works tirelessly on behalf of the North and especially the prospectors. Um, I think there's going to be a number of people here that would think the prospectors haven't been, have, they've been forgotten. They haven't. We're just getting started on, on changing um, the relationships with, with all parties in the, um, associated with mining, and prospectors have not and will not be forgotten. Um, in Northern Ontario, uh, the theme of this, this uh, conference today is exploration finds mines. Could not be more appropriate because, as we know, there is no mining without exploration. And Northern Ontario is home to some of the most exciting mineral-rich deposits in the world, just waiting to be explored. What we have in our backyard is the minerals of tomorrow today here in Northwestern Ontario as we change from an economy that's fossil fuel driven 
to one that's going to be battery driven. We have these minerals. We are mining the future tomorrow, today, in Thunder Bay. We have, we're well endowed with all the critical minerals and Thunder Bay will be a hub of all of that activity. We have the critical minerals that will fuel electric vehicles and the technologies of tomorrow. We have some of the most exciting gold projects in the north at a time when investors around the world are looking to gold as a store of value. Um, what we're seeing in gold right now is a situation where the Chinese want to be the world's dominant um, economy. To do that, <clears throat> they have to have the dominant uh, currency. Uh, 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 China produces more gold than any other community, and they buy more gold than any other country. Did I say community? Country. Than any other country. Um, it's, it's why gold is approaching 3,000 bucks an ounce. Uh, <clears throat> they are seeking world domination. Uh, in, 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 in space, they're seeking world domination in uh, defense. Um, we have to be wary of that, aware of that. <clears throat> Certainly the U.S. is. So it's no, it's no surprise that gold is thriving and exploration for gold is at an all-time high with almost $600 million invested in gold exploration in 2023. I believe we can keep that positive momentum by going, by creating, creating certainty and by continuing to advocate for Ontario's mineral exploration and mining sector to investors around the world. Uh, and that's what we do. We were in London um, just before Christmas to do that, market our mining potential to the Europeans. It was interesting because there was people uh, um, uh, I guess they, 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 maybe they were in, uh, I think they might have been in France, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but they didn't, they didn't really want to see any investment in mining investment in Europe. And I said, well, that's fine. We'll take all the investment right here in Ontario. We'll take all you can give us. So that potential exists with the countless unexplored deposits across northern Ontario. I want to talk about the Ontario Junior Exploration Program. Um, because it's because of that potential, that's exactly why we launched the Ontario Junior Exploration Program in 2021 to encourage more early exploration in the province. Since the launch, Ontario has funded over 130 projects, totaling more than $20 million in that short period of time. And today, I'm proud to announce and celebrate the fourth round of recipients of this successful program. Through this intake, we are investing over $4 million in 35 projects ranging from critical minerals to gold and other valuable minerals. There are 15 projects in Thunder Bay that received approximately 2.1 million. This investment is also leveraging an additional $10 million in investment from, an industry, from industry. This successful program is helping junior companies across the North and especially in the Northwest region. Solstice Gold Corps, Solstice Gold Corps project targeting lithium, Copper Lake Resources project targeting copper and zinc, Tyco Resources Incorporated, Incorporated's project targeting nickel, copper and platinum gold elements, and Flatgate Exploration Con Consulting Corporation's project targeting nickel, copper and cobalt. <clears throat> we don't want the nickel from Indonesia. We don't want the cobalt from the Congo. The nickel from Indonesia is powered by coal, the financing comes China's, from China, and the waste is distributed right into the ocean. We don't want the nickel from Indonesia. And for obvious reasons, we don't want the cobalt from the Congo. You know the, the, the history with, with uh, youth mining and, and the, the human rights abuses in the Congo. We want those minerals to be produced right here in Ontario. There are another 31 exciting exploration projects approved for funding this round. Too many to mention here, but each with the potential to create thousands of jobs and generational wealth for the region. But the good news doesn't stop there. I'm pleased to let everyone to know, let everyone know that the fifth intake of this program will be open on May 8th, so be sure to get your applications in. The Critical Minerals Innovation Fund. 
our investments don't stop with expiration. We're investing in the downstream in industries like processing to ensure we've, that we will fill supply chain gaps. That's why we launched the Critical Minerals Innovation Fund to help solve modern, mi modern mining supply chain challenges by leveraging Ontario's highly educated and experienced workers. I shouldn't have to read that, I know it. But uh, it's, and we need more trained people. We need more trade, uh, tradespeople. Um, all across uh, uh, the North, we know that we need the people to be involved in the mining sector. That's, we listened to the positive feedback we received on these projects, which is why through Budget 24, we are investing another $15 million in the fund, meaning that we're investing a total of $20 million <clears throat> to support research, development, and commercialization of technologies, processes, and solutions for mining and critical minerals. This fund also encourages collaboration between mining companies and academics, non-for-profits, or indigenous communities, which benefits regions across the province. The Ontario Geological Society, and this, it's, if, I'm sure you've walked around here and seen some of the, uh, uh, some of the, uh, the, um, uh, the presentations here. And this is another major competitive advantage we have for Ontario exploration sector is the Ontario Geological Survey, better known to most to you as OGS. OGS geoscience scientists are doing great work <clears throat> collecting data generating innovative, day, innovative ideas and working to better understand Ontario's geology and Earth's resources. And nobody does it better. And I say that very confidentially. Confidently. <laughs> they are the best. They really are the best. Uh, spend some time in these offices. Talk to the people. Get to the gnome. The information is free. It's world class. And nobody does it better than our scientists right here in offices like Thunder Bay, or Timmins, or Sudbury. They're the world's best, and they're very, very proud of what they do. In fact, when I was traveling in, into London, we, we have a couple of people that travel with us, and um, they're so passionate about what they do. A lot of the investors around Europe would gravitate around these types of uh, presentations. And our, once you get your geologists talking about the potential that we have, you can't, uh, you can feel you can feel the vibe, you can feel the energy with the people that want to invest in Ontario, and it's because of the professional people we have employed right here at the OGS. I'll, I'll speak specifically about their, spa their uh, spatial search tool, Geology Ontario, that has been updated with a lot of great uh, fe fe features recently. recently. If you just take a look at this. This is amazing. Um, Anybody that wants to get information about our projects, look at that tool. And again, it's online, it's free, it's an amazing tool. The redesign portal features new geospatial, uh, spatial and text search tools, making it easier to search for, discover and download Ontario's geoscience data and information. In the age of instant information, these advancements and competitive advantages, advantages are vital to attracting mineral investments and making informed decisions about them. I want to talk a bit about the Building More Mines Act. Our plan also includes to cut red tape that has been holding back our sector for, for, for years. It's simply unacceptable that it, has, that it would take 15 to 17 years to permit a mine. And in fact, as I've just told you, the federal government knows that they have to take 10 years off the permitting and we've got our mines, we've got to permit our mines, uh, build our mines five times faster. So that's why our government passed the Building More Mines Act and I'm excited to share that the regulations came to force early this month on April 1st. This act ensures that the ministry can, can, oper can operate at the pace of business because we know that governments don't build mines, companies do. The act improves our system without sacrificing our world-class environmental protections or our duty to consult with Indigenous communities, which I'm very proud of. Our government's effort to support the mining sector are clearly working. For the second year in a row, Ontario has led the entire country in mineral exploration investments, totaling $952 million in 2023. There's a lot to be excited about, but that does not mean we are, we are satisfied. There's still lots of work to be done. 
We have heard from early exploration companies that, that the assessment work regime is outdated and holding back our industry. I have instructed the Mines Ministry to look for solutions that will reduce burden on companies and increase certainty. I want to thank everyone who provided information through the ERO posting and who have spoken to my staff directly. I look forward to presenting options to improve the assessment work regime very soon. Because we, mine, we must find new deposits, we are going to build more mines, and, that is why, and that's why being gathered here today is so important. So like all the tenacious prospectors that came before you, I encourage you to get out in the bush and find out what our province has to offer. Get the drills turning and know that our government has your back and we will do our part to realize this generational opportunity for everyone in our province, especially for the northern and indigenous communities. Because we all know the economy of the future depends on mining and we have what the world needs here in Thunder Bay, in northwestern Ontario, and across northern Ontario. It's a great place to be. And remember, this is our time. Thank you very much. Do you like what you see? Hit the subscribe button. Net News Ledger will keep you up to date on business news, mining news, weather, everything you need to know across northern Ontario and beyond.